Hello, Accounting Superstars. This is Professor Don Bush from the Accounting Superstar channel. So glad you're here. I've been a professor for about 30 years, CPA for about that long, and I've got great ways to explain accounting, so you've come to the right place. So today's lesson is about job costing journal entries, and this is lesson number three on journal entries. So far, we've learned how to do uh, raw materials, and uh, both direct and indirect raw materials, those journal entries, and here's the journal entries for labor. It's really pretty easy and straightforward. Now, in a future video, I'll do the journal entries for overhead. That's the tricky part, overhead. So you don't want to miss that video. Hey, and by the way, hit the like button and subscribe button if this uh, video helps you out because that way I know you like these videos and I'll make more for you. So let's get the show rolling here. Well, here's what we got going on. Uh, some factory employees earned $26,000 during the week and related employer taxes amounted to $4,000. So here is what we've got. Let me highlight it here. We're going to debit factory labor for $30,000. Now, uh, this factory labor, it, it's a holding account. That's all it is, it's just a holding account. It, it, we're dumping some numbers into it and we're gonna pull numbers back out. So here's what we're going to credit. We're going to credit factory wages and employee taxes payable for the 26,000. Now, uh, factory wages uh, payable, that, that'll be the amount of money paid to the employees. But uh, since these employees are employees, uh, they've got to pay taxes. They have taxes withheld out of their paychecks. And so I'm just summarizing it here. In reality, you, you wouldn't want to do a journal entry quite like this, but you'd want to specify the employee taxes payable. But I'm just lumping it all together just to keep it easy. And then next, we've got employer uh, payroll taxes payable. So the boss here has to pay, or the company, has to pay $4,000 in taxes, all right, over and above what's withheld out of the paychecks. So it adds up, it adds up. A good rule of thumb is, oh gosh, about 20, 25% at least of um, the uh, employee's gross pay. So coming down here, here's what's going to happen with this journal entry. So here's this account, factory labor, and again, this factory labor is just a temporary holding account. That's all it is. And we're not going to track the payables. That, that's not the focus of the lesson today. According to the time tickets, 15,000 of the factory labor was used to build the sailboat Summer Breeze. So here's what we're going to do here. Um, direct labor. In addition, 3,000 of factory labor was considered to be indirect labor. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to debit the account work in process inventory for 15,000. And check this out, we're going to also debit manufacturing overhead for 3,000. And we'll credit factory labor for the grand total amount. So here's what's going on, is that out of all this pay, gosh, $30,000 of pay altogether, just a portion of it, quite a bit of it actually, uh, went, went to building the boat summer breeze, all right? So this factory labor, this uh, initial journal entry that uh, we did here for $30,000, that represents all the factory labor uh, for the week. And, and it includes work on other boats also. So if you're wondering, why aren't you doing something with the 30,000? It's just that we're just focusing on one of the boats, okay? Just to keep the example easy. So here, coming down here, we're debiting work in process inventory for the direct labor. So what's direct labor? That's Those are the people that actually work on the boat. They're actually building the boat. You know, they're rolling up their sleeves, getting their hands dirty, installing the tech, uh, teak wood. They're uh, putting on the rudder. They're working with the fiberglass. They're painting the boat. They're actually building the boat. Now, the people who are also very, very important in the factory, but are not actually building the boat, we call that indirect labor. And for the indirect labor, we are debiting manufacturing overhead. So to put it all in a nutshell, uh, direct labor goes into work and process. Indirect labor goes to manufacturing overhead. All right, it's just that easy. So let's take care of this 
uh, work and process inventory for 15 and manufacturing overhead for three. And, and just one more time, I, I know it's not adding up to the original 30,000, but all we're doing is focusing on this one boat, Summer Breeze. We're, we're kind of ignoring all the other boats. So coming down here, direct labor. So we'll put in some uh, information here. So apparently it was for, uh, for the teakwood install. 15,000. So what I did is I entered the direct labor onto the job cost sheet. And of course we would have a job cost sheet for each and every boat, but we're just focusing on the boat summer breeze just to keep it easy, manageable. All right. Not get lost in the details. Now the um, 3000 that's going over here to manufacturing overhead there's a holding account right here, and this is a temporary account also, manufacturing overhead. So it is getting debited for 3,000. Now, so what's going on with manufacturing overhead is that it, it includes a whole bunch of different costs, indirect labor, indirect materials, factory costs such as payroll, uh, factory property taxes, property insurance, um, heating costs, uh, security lights, lights to light the ceiling. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. But we're just uh, keeping it down to the basics here. We're, we're just including the um, indirect labor here, the $3,000. And if you're wondering where that number come from again, came from right here. Manufacturing overhead 3000 That's the indirect labors. So this indirect labor, it's getting placed into this temporary holding account. Now, in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how we empty out this uh, temporary holding account. All right, so coming down here. Now, work and process inventory, it's going to have uh, be charged for $15,000. And again, you might say, where is that coming from? That's coming from the job cost sheet right here. We entered in this $15,000. Well, these job cost sheets need to match the work in process inventory. So when all the accountings caught up, the work in process inventory account, this is a general ledger account, should match all of the job cost sheets, all the jobs that are still in process, all right? And so we're, we're, we're peeling it back to the bare bones here. So you're not seeing the whole picture, but hopefully enough to understand what's going on. So I hope this lesson helped you out. And if it did, hit the like and subscribe button. That would help me a lot. That way I know you like these videos and I'll make more. And um, check out accountingsuperstars.com. Until next time, over and out.